In the course of everyone's pickleball career, there comes a point when they begin to ponder the question of how they may improve or uplift their game. It's possible that your mind wanders to the topic of shot selection. You can decide to get a new paddle or shoes that suit you more comfortably. You decide to practice a little bit more and have some pickleball-related strategy discussions with your partner and some of your pals. But there's one aspect that is frequently neglected despite its significance to a good pickleball game. That's where your footwork comes in. If you have experience with any kind of sports, you're aware of how important footwork and positioning may be. The situation is the same when playing pickleball. Today, in addition to discussing how to practice your footwork, we will go over the split step that is used in pickleball. Let's go! Hello and welcome to Pro Pickleball Media, your number one spot for all pickleball content. Our channel is dedicated to the fastest growing sport in the US, and we cover all fun and exciting things related to pickleball. So if you love pickleball and want to learn more about it, then just take a second to subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss any of our recent videos. In today's video, we're going to talk about the importance of good footwork in pickleball. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video where we will reveal five simple steps that can drastically improve your footwork and make your movements fluid in pickleball. Now let's get right into the video. What is split stepping? Imagine that you're competing in a game of tennis or pickleball and your rival hits the ball in your direction. What do you do? If you remain in that one spot, one of two things will happen. Either the ball will travel around you or it will hit you. Split stepping into a position where you're ready to strike the ball back is what the vast majority of individuals do instead. Where you're in a ready position, your feet should be spaced shoulder width apart or slightly wider than shoulder width apart, and your knees should be bent slightly. In essence, you transition from a neutral stance to one in which your feet are spread apart. That's a step with a split in it. Why is split stepping so important? Getting into a ready stance via split stepping puts you in a better position to respond effectively to any shot that is fired in your direction. When playing pickleball, better players will frequently aim the ball at your feet because it is typically more difficult to return shots that are aimed at your feet. If you were just standing there with your back straight, it would be nearly hard to react quickly enough and go low enough to make contact with the ball if you tried to do so from that position. Because your body will already be lower to the ground when you split step, you'll be able to get to the ball more quickly. Additionally, because you're in this posture, you have the ability to pivot to either side with greater ease than you would if you were in a neutral position. Because of this, you are free to use either your forehand or backhand. It also makes it easier for you to chase down a ball if you need to. Now, before we move ahead to talk about more game-changing pickleball tips, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can keep bringing more informative pickleball content to you. Your little contribution means a lot for us. When should you split step? Maintaining a ready position for the entirety of the match would be taxing on one's energy reserves. Instead, the optimal time to split step is just before the ball is served, and then again after you have transitioned to the portion of the court where you intend to play from. Take, for instance, the scenario in which you are the returning team. While your opponent begins to serve, you take a split step to get into position and prepare for the next point. After then, you serve the ball back. If you just stayed in your split step position, there's a strong chance you're making a space for the other team to take advantage of on the court. Instead, you should move to the location where you intend to play the subsequent shot in the sequence. Once your opponent strikes the ball, you will need to come back to your position and split step once again so that you're prepared to return the ball to the opponent. The split step followed by the transition, and then the split step once more, occurs over and over again throughout the pickleball matches. Once we are aware that we should be doing it, it becomes something that we just do automatically and does not require any conscious thought on our part. Yet it is not something that any of us necessarily think about consciously. The error that players make is either getting into their split step too early, which causes them to miss an opportunity to chase down a shot on the other side of the court, or staying in their split step for too long, which causes them to watch their own shot. Both of these mistakes result in them making the same mistake. Due of the necessity to react fast, a player who is at the NBZ line will usually always be in a split step ready position. This is because of the importance of the position, but if you are still standing at the baseline after the third shot, you definitely shouldn't be in a split step until you know where your opponent is sending their shot. Until you know where your opponent is sending their shot. How to practice for better footwork. Fortunately, practicing your footwork is easy to do. You don't even have to do it on the pickleball court. Practice your split step. You can practice transitioning from a neural position to a split step in any environment, although it is recommended that you do this at home rather than, say, a grocery store or some other public place. Simply stand stall, hop into your split step by lowering your body, spreading your legs about the width of your shoulders apart, bending your knees ever so slightly, and then return to your starting position. You have the option of using a paddle or proceeding without one. Practice your transitions. You're going to need a little bit more room to work with for this particular one. You are going to want to begin in a neutral position, then hop into a split step, then hop back up into a neutral position, and then either sprint or jog to a new position. If you are practicing on a court, you should try to practice from the baseline all the way to the NVZ line. 
When you have reached the new position, immediately begin a split step again by lowering your body. Repeat this process multiple times until you're comfortable switching between a split step and a transition, and then switching back again. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Stepping laterally along the MVC line in a split stance is the final component of practicing footwork and the split step. You spend more time in the split step position when you're near the net than when you're further away. The constant switching of roles and quick dinking shots. Being at the ready at all times is crucial. Only by regularly assuming the position can you learn to feel at ease there. Some of you may be experiencing back or leg pain. In that case, pay attention to your body and stay seated for only as long as it's comfortable. With any luck, your split step sitting endurance will increase as your muscles strengthen. Focusing on footwork. Too much attention is paid by players to their paddles or even the ball. Using your whole body effectively is the key to mastering control, power, and speed. The ground provides us with the necessary support to keep our bodies in working order. We can use this bond with the earth to launch ourselves off of solid surfaces and gain speed through our legs. When leading, players frequently rely on solely their upper bodies. This will encourage too much frantic motion, which will throw off your equilibrium. Effective footwork guarantees that one should 1. Go to the ball quickly and easily 2. Get to the ball in a way that sets you up for the next shot and 3. Get your lower body involved so that you can put your weight into the ball. Footwork is key to balance. Balance is something you need to work on at all time and good footwork is a big part of that. Stream movement can leave players not only exhausted but also unable to fully recover from the effects of the preceding shot. Instead of taking a bunch of baby steps, I'd rather take one big one. The movement of my body weight is supported by this. This will ensure that my hips and shoulders can move freely. Check your footwork the next time you play pickleball. If possible, step out rather than across. At the conclusion of each shot, we should have our weight moving forward. So, what strategies do you use to improve your footwork in pickleball matches? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like this video, share with your fellow picklers. Also, if you love pickleball, then make sure to watch this next video on our channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.